huge, huge news today. Boys and girls, homies and homets, big dogs and dogettes. All right, I'll shut the fuck up. I'm sorry. Listen, y'all remember the draft app. Draft, D-R-A-F-T. The single best place to prepare, to mock draft, to do your best ball drafts. Draft. I know y'all remember it because you email me or tweet at me or DM me or comment on my YouTube videos like 38 times a day asking what happened to draft. That's how I know y'all remember. And I remember because it was my favorite platform to draft on. My favorite place to prepare for your 2020 fantasy drafts. Guess what? The team that created draft has brought it bike in its new upgraded armor filled platform called underdog fantasy underdog fantasy i'm going to link the app download in the description and y'all need to go download it asap it is in the google play store it is in the ios apple store and we have a draft going on right now nope that's not it where are we where are we active drafts oh boy Mm. here we go we have started the draft and here's what's going to happen i'm going to move this to the middle so you guys can hang out with me not right now so underdog fantasy that is the app that we will be drafting on from now on because these are the homies and they've put together the single best best ball app on the market okay so if y'all are new to best ball this is how it works you draft a large team 18 players no kickers no defenses none of that bullshit that we don't need headaches from all right we got enough headaches in our life i got a lot of anxiety i don't even know if the nfl is going to happen etc 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 animal over here picking derrick henry at the 104 ahead of alvin kamara he will make that mistake only once in his life they take the best player each week the best three players at wide receiver two at running back one at quarterback, one at tight end, and they put them into your starting lineup. So you actually do no in-season roster management tools, okay? I want to give you all the breakdown on best ball, but we're about to make our pick. So they have Christian McCaffrey, Zeke, Saquon, Derrick Henry, Animal with the first... I don't even want to say questionable. I think it's okay to go 104. What does concern me a little bit is the offensive line in Tennessee. And I'll get back to that after we pick. Tennessee ranked fourth per football outsiders in run blocking last year their pass blocking grade last year pro football outsiders was 32nd it was dead last in the nfl it's so weird i don't understand how that happens but now they lose jack conklin and i'm on the board and i'm gonna lose this draft if i don't make a pick so we're at the 109 30 seconds fast draft we got no time to think about it michael thomas off the board wasn't taking him anyways uh, I want a running back early, and I love me some Josh Jankups. Shout out to Stevie One Chains. Okay, so <clears throat> Derrick Henry, you lose Jack Conklin, man. And I know Derrick Henry is a bruiser. Up the middle, you can't tackle the fucking man unless you have bionic arms and you want to take a bruise on your biceps and your triceps. Derrick Henry is the bruise creator. However, a big part of Derrick Henry's game is hitting the outside hitting that tackle and bursting upfield, giving him that stretch handoff and letting him hit the corner. Without Jack Conklin, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit worried to see what happens here. So Derrick Henry gets the extension. They're still going to give him 350 carries, so I could probably just be quiet and let the volume speak for itself. Derrick Henry, Alvin Kamara, Dalvin Cook, Miles Sanders. Cook is still a little bit questionable for me at that 106 spot. I want to see what happens if he actually reports to camp because we had all this nonsense. Oh, he's reporting to camp. Oh, he's not reporting to camp. He's reporting to camp. It's like that Entourage clip, the YouTube video where uh, they do a spoof of Entourage. And Vinny's like, oh, we're doing a movie. Uh, We're not doing a movie. We're doing a movie. Everything is going to be all right. That's like what the fuck Dalvin Cook has going on right now in Minnesota. So uh, you probably have no idea what I'm even talking about when I'm referring to that video. But it's a good one. If you're an Entourage fan, then I uh, I would suggest searching that. And we have the 109. So we are on the clock at the 204. We'll see who drops to me. Y'all know I've been a heavy, heavy advocate of doubling down on running backs because the depth at wide receiver is just so, so 
massive. Now, best ball is awesome. This, the reason why underdog and these drafts are awesome for prepping you for your 2020 fantasy football season is this. You know what? We can do day. We could do. Ah, they snipe me with Eckler. I don't know if this is too bright for y'all, but I like the day mode. It, it helps me wake up. It, it yells at me a little bit. All right. So there's no one at running back that I'm actually willing to take here. So I'm okay pivoting to wide receiver right now in best ball because that does give you a little bit more uh, or a little less volatility at the running back position as opposed to season long. So hard not to be a fan of Tyreek Hill. Hard not to be a fan of Travis Kelsey as well. But I'm going to go with Tyreek Hill because he is like the perfect best ball pick here. So we have a running back one. We have our wide receiver one. Now, this is a point I made. I actually, uh, this morning's video or this morning's podcast on the Roto Underworld podcast, if you guys are fans of Matt, Matt Kelly, the pod father, the creator of playerprofiler.com, I chopped it up with him on his podcast this morning. We literally went for like two hours and 45 minutes. It was the most asinine podcast of all time. That dropped this morning. So if you're listening, if you, if you want some more flavor getting kicked in your ear by yours truly, teaming up with Matt Kelly. I'm going to link that podcast in the description. It was a really, really good one. It was a lot of fun to get on there with him and uh, and talk some fantasy. So talked a lot about a lot, a lot of stuff on there. One of the things I talked about, and it's relevant to why we're going so heavy on running backs early, right? We talk about needing to get the running backs early, needing to get them early. First two picks need to be running back, running back, running back, running back. Here's why. Here's why. Because let me wet my lips with the nectar. Because the scarcity at the position is is so small, or great, I guess, if we're going to use that terminology, compared to wide receivers. You could throw so many wide receivers in there. There were 25 wide receivers that passed 1,000 receiving yards last year. 25. That is the single highest number of 1,000-yard receivers of all time in a single season. Tied with, actually, 1999 also at 25. So, 99... 2019, maybe we're getting a trend every 20 years, 2039, 20, 2039, make sure you're drafting wide receiver threes late. Single most thousand yard wide receivers. So we have this narrative that it's so deep at wide receiver two, wide receiver three. The market tends to set itself every year for draft strategy based on what happened in the prior year. We had 25 wide receivers go over a thousand yards, one single wide receiver go over 1400 yards, Michael Thomas. So we have this preset notion in our head that we don't have enough elite wide receivers because only one of them went over 1400 the class is just so deep because they're all going over a thousand right so we have that in our mind and that's how we draft so i do think it is very very responsible as fantasy players to go with our running backs early because once you get to the fourth fifth sixth round the value prop on running backs like the the Todd Gurley's and the David Johnson's, the Le'Veon Bell's are just awful compared to the Terry McLaurin's, Robert Woods, DJ Charks, and guys you can get there. So smart to get running backs early, but I'm not reaching for a guy like Leonard Fournette or James Conner or Chris Carson in the second round because there's just too much risk involved there. So I'll pivot if I need to go with Josh Jacobs, Tyree Kill. Let's see some of the draft picks we had after Tyree Kill. Travis Kelsey, Julio Jones, Chris Godwin, George Kittle, I think is a really, really sharp pick given that Debo is going to miss a lot of time in the beginning of the year. And uh, George Kittle kicked off to a fucking roaring start. He's going to he's, he's gonna bust in a couple seconds, man. He is the equivalent to pre-ejaculation of fantasy football, except it's meant in a, in a good sense. Clyde edwards Lair at the 211. Galladay, Mark Andrews, James Conner, Odell, Beckham, Animal. Starts off with Derrick Henry, takes Lamar Jackson at the 2-9. I don't hate actually taking Lamar Jackson that early in a best ball league. Get your guy. Don't have to worry about it for the rest of the year. But there's just so much depth at quarterback. These are one quarterback leagues. So back to underdog. You start one quarterback. You start two running backs. You start three wide receivers. And you start one tight end. And again, the software on the platform automatically starts the highest scoring players at those positions in those quantities for you each week. There's no in-season moves. There's no trades. There's no waiver wire. So that is important when you are building up your roster. However, since these leagues are paid leagues, these are not free leagues, you come, you pay to play with the big dogs, that means everyone's taking it very seriously. So the ADP data that you get from here and the actual draft competitiveness that you're going to get with the people in this draft are going to be very, very, very high and likely the best uh, competition that you're going to get. What is he talking about? Snacks is going nuts right now. 
Um, okay, so let me check Twitter real quick. Let me catch my breath for half a second. Wow, this is big, big news. Huge news. On the clock, Damian Williams has opted out of the 2020 NFL season. We will come back. We will, excuse me, come back to that in a second. Uh, give me all the Chris Carson here, actually. Was Mahomes already taken? Yes, he was. I love Chris Carson, man. I, I've, I've brought this tweet up multiple times, and I will probably continue to do so. Quick best shortcut on Twitter is typing in a word that you're looking for and from the at person. Latest. I will continue to throw this down your guys' faces. If you discount Chris Carson's week 16, where he played on 32% of the snaps before leaving in the second quarter with a hip fracture, look at the touch counts in 2019. 16 plus touches, 18 plus touches. 20 plus touches, 24 plus touches in 93, 86, 64, and 50. Guy had 24 more touches in 50% of his games. He's the workhorse in round three and four you want if you miss on early running backs. So I will stack up Josh Jacobs and Chris Carson, who are about to have 314 touches, 314 carries each between the two of them and roll. If you miss on Chris Carson, I don't hate Fournette or Gordon in the fourth round, but I would prefer Carson to those guys. So. After I make this pick, we're going to get back to Clyde Edwards Slayer. We're going to get back to Damian Williams. That is that is wild. Well, that hurts my Damian shares. I have not picked a single Damian Williams share in best ball, thank God. So, anyways, back to uh back to back to bite to bite to underdog. So again, underdog fantasy, they have a flawless app. They also obviously have the desktop thing going on here flawless app on ios flawless app on mobile go download it the links will be in the description as well as the pinned comment great pick there by dob 88 on robert woods not good enough though because you're leaving me you're leaving me with the homie adam thielen stefan diggs is gone justin jefferson's on the COVID ir list who knows when he's ready back to play adam thielen is is Easily going for 140 targets this year. So give me Adam Thielen as my wide receiver too. All day tomorrow, the next day, and all the way till 2039 when we have 25 wide receivers going off for 1,000 yards. When you download Underdog and you throw on $10 to deposit, something that very much helps out my brand, the big dogs, helps us continue to eat and helps us stay in business while we're putting out all this free content for y'all. If you... How do I put this over? When you go deposit, after you deposit, you're going to come across a page like this where it just asks you who referred you. So in the partner, I have a code. You just throw on BDGE and you submit it. So when you deposit $10 on Underdog Fantasy, let them know that we sent you and that is much appreciated. If you value the information, if you value the content and the videos that I am making for y'all, this is a really, really big way to help you guys, uh, for you guys to help me. As well as just hitting the thumbs up on these videos, let me know that you do enjoy them and you want me to continue to make them. I'll probably do a mock draft on Underdog every single week until the season starts. So putting in my name there is a great help to myself. Clyde Edwards Hilaire obviously becomes the man there now. Uh, wouldn't surprise me to see them re-sign LaShawn McCoy now. Obviously, he knows the system. He played with them last year. He is a free agent. And, uh, you know, comfortability within LaShawn McCoy's range for Andy Reid is going to be important. So, Damian Williams opts out. I guess by default, Clyde Edwards Hilaire just became a prized, prized, prized pick in best ball, in season long, in, in dynasty. Okay. So, what does this mean, redraft? The, the opportunity couldn't be more more fucking plush. Said it a million times. Patrick Mahomes, since he has became the starter in KC, Kansas City running backs, while he is on the field, averaged 1.74. Let me say it for the people on the bike. 1.74 touchdowns. If Pat Mahomes is the quarterback, which he is for a very, 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 very long time, for the next 160 games... For the Chiefs, the running backs are scoring 1.74 touchdowns every time they're on the field. The only competition that Damian Williams had, that Clyde Edwards Hilaire had, excuse me, was Damian Williams. It is 
guaranteed the Clyde Edwards Hilaire show in Kansas City. Holy shit. I don't think I'm making enough of this right now. I've already had like three energy drinks today, and I feel like if I start yelling, my heart's going to explode, so I'm trying to keep it down. But uh, but yeah, Clyde Edwards Hilaire just became a, a bona fide first round pick. He just became a first round pick and a good one at that. And I kind of love that because now it's just another running back thrown to the mix. I had been slowly moving him down draft boards, slowly moving him down draft boards. And that was because they kept talking about how Damian Williams was going to be involved, 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 involved. And now they can't involve him because he's not going to be fucking playing. Oh, boy, Clyde, Clyde, Clyde. I mean, he was always like a borderline first round, early second round dynasty pick for me. Just having Damian Williams there was not something that was going to affect my long-term outlook for Clyde. You can find my rankings in the draft guide, bigdogsdraftguide.com. But this uh, this absolutely affects the ranking of Clyde Edwards-Hilaire in redraft. And I'm going to have to adjust my rankings in the draft guide accordingly. So the other reason why we don't go with running backs late or wait for them to drop to us is because while there are some good running backs here, Cam Akers, Devin Singletary, and I like quarterbacks here as well, actually. Uh, I'm actually going to take a quarterback and... No, I'm not. I'm going to take a... I'm going to take Devontae Parker here as my wide receiver three. Uh, I I think it doesn't get much more simple than that. Shout out to Animal. Let's see how Animal's team is actually doing. Let's fucking shit on him right now. L. Jax, Derrick Henry, DeMont, A-Rob, Keenan Allen. Uh... I guess I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm going to throw some stats out about Keenan Allen because when I was on the podcast today with the Podfather, we were about to get into some talk about Keenan Allen. And then he just abruptly interrupted me and started talking about Leonard Fournette. And then obviously, before you know it, I'm talking about Leonard Fournette for the next 45 minutes. But here's what I was going to say about Keenan Allen. He's like, are we avoiding him? And here's the way I look at Keenan Allen. It's like, Tyrod Taylor, how many yards is he going to pass for? I don't know. Most fantasy fantasy people automatically assume best case scenario. Always, you're going to say 4,000 passing yards. I'm here to tell you that shit ain't happening. Tyrod Taylor is not throwing for 4,000 passing yards, okay? Do you know what Russell Wilson's passing yardage over under was heading into the 2019 season? Do you remember? I fucking remember because I remember going nuts about it. I remember getting more hyped up about it than I am right now. It was 3,650. 3650. So you think Tyrod Taylor is going to pass up what Russell Wilson did last year? There's going to be a slow moving offense. And Tyrod Taylor's not throwing the ball that many times. So Tyrod Taylor, let's look at some of the other guys that are on par with Tyrod, right? Like reasonably, we can expect in the same passing range. Tannehill, 3450. These are passing yardage markers by the FanDuel Sportsbook. 3450. Sam Darnold at 3,600. Teddy B is at 3,500, right? So Tyrod, a full 16 game. I think he's right in that tier. And I would arguably say probably closer to like 3,300, right? Josh Allen threw for, I think, 3,100 30, maybe last year. Lamar Jackson around 3,100. So I think 3,500 is generous. I think he's going to be closer to 3,300. Do we really think that I'm not going to pick Kyler Murray here? Because of course I'm going to fucking pick Kyler Murray here. Let's get this, let's get this, let's get this fucking bread. Kyler Murray. We'll get back to that in a sec. I want to get back to Keenan Allen though. Do we really think Keenan Allen is straight up going to take a third of the passing yards? 33% of the receiving yards in this offense? It's not going to happen. Last year, he accounted for 26% of Phillip Rivers' passing yards. The year before, he accounted for 27.7% of the passing yards. Two years ago, three years ago, 2017 was his career high in terms of the receiving yardage market share at 30.8%. Okay? So if we give him that career high this year, He has 30.8% of Tyrod Taylor's passing yardage. You're going to have Keenan flirting with like 1,000, 1,050 receiving yards. He'll probably land somewhere in the 75 to like 82 receptions, 1,000 yards, five touchdowns. So based on where Keenan Allen is going off the board, you can give me Lockett, who I think has 8 to 10 touchdown upside, along with 1,000 yards receiving. Give me Terry McLaurin, who has 140 to 145 target upside and weekly 70-yard touchdown upside. Like, Allen just doesn't have a lot of appeal for me. But Kyler Murray does in the sixth round. And I actually just came across a good tweet that I'll bring up for you guys. I can't remember who put it out. Was it Scott Barrett? Oh, my God. Look at all the CEH 
uh, questions I'm about to get right now. Scott Barrett. I believe it was actually relevant to best ball. Wow, Rotoviz's best ball win rate explorer is so cool. Blah, 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 blah. I have already used to discover some important differences between season long and best ball in terms of strategic approach. So for the most part, guys, I know you're going to be like best ball. It's different where people draft, but I promise you the ADPs are almost like identical to where you get season long. And again, these are all paid drafts. So you pay to play. So people are taking them very seriously. You're not, there's no kickers. There's no defenses to fuck up the drafts, all skill position players. For instance, late round quarterback is king. Oh, I forgot my videos in the way. My bad. Let me move this. Late round quarterback is king and standard season long, but quarterback is too valuable for that in best ball. So we see this chart here and you see the win rates above and below draft position averages for quarterbacks, right? It's red in rounds three, four, and five, and it begins to become green in rounds six through 12. And if you wait to start drafting your quarterbacks all the way till rounds 13, you're back in the red again. So with best ball being relatively new, and guys, you also win money. You come back at the end of the year, depending on where you place in the draft, uh, you win money based on the entry fee, right? They have $3 drafts, $5 drafts, $10 drafts. I think it goes all the way up to like a fucking Millie Maker draft. So they got a lot of cool options depending on what you want to do. And uh, as you could see, well, you don't want to just start drafting quarterbacks in rounds 12, 13, and 14. You want to get good guys. And the reason I like Kyler Murray, and I've said this before, is like in super flex leagues, he's only like four or five picks behind Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. But in best ball drafts, he's like four or five rounds. I think there's a big discrepancy to be had. And I think he's like a fantastic best ball pick because he's going to have weeks where he pops off for 40 yards or 40 points. So I'm getting a lot of Kyler and Dak in the sixth round, sometimes seventh round. Sometimes I grab Deshaun Watson in the seventh round. But I typically like to get one of those those key players in that in that range. Um, if I don't, then I'll probably wait until like the 10th round or so. There's a lot of good value to be had on Cam Newton because his ADP is still kind of low uh, because the platform, this underdog platform actually just launched like a couple weeks ago. So we are starting. We're going to be the fucking number one driver of people coming to the platform, y'all. So you, we're, we're just going to be drafting with each other. It's going to be epic. Someone literally just drafted Damian Williams. You love to see that. You love to see that. You're throwing money away here and it's going into my pocket. That is fucking beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh, the running backs are ugly. I'm glad I grabbed two studs. But then there's no one where I really love at uh, wide receiver anymore, and I don't love tight ends much. I'll go with Edelman, man. I've uh, I've actually been getting a lot of Edelman in my best ball drafts. And the way I do best ball, y'all y'all hear me talk about this all, all the time, diversifying the revenue here. If I've done a lot of best ball drafts, which I've done a freak load of, um, Let me show you how many drafts I got going on. These are all the drafts on the left side that I have going on. So as soon as you sign up for underdog, I'll be posting on Twitter. I'll be posting in the discord channel, uh, tons of drafts that I'm joining in. So you can, you guys can come draft with me. They are working on a few things. I believe I'm hoping that they get the friends list, uh, squared away. So when you guys join, you could add me as a friend. That's not a feature on the platform yet. When that happens, I'll be able to personally invite you guys. You'll get a notification on the app so you can draft with me. Uh, but I will be posting when I do join draft so you guys can come in and join with me as long as you use BDGE in the referral code spot. So went with Julian Edelman there. Uh, we have four wide receivers. I haven't taken a tight end yet, but I feel like I like about 10 of the guys right here. I'm not in that group of people who loves Tyler Higby as like a monster breakout candidate this year. The sample size is just too dang small. Running back. I like Sony. I don't like Keyshawn. I don't love... Did Deshaun Watson go off the board? Yeah, he did. Uh, we're going to time out, so I'm just going to go with Sony here. I've talked enough about Sony in my recent videos, and a lot of y'all like to shit on the fact that I like Sony. Listen. Listen. He's going to get a lot... He's going to get... I shouldn't have just doubled down on New England players, to be honest with you. And I just looked at my running backs, and don't do what I did. Don't do... Be smarter than me. This is... You know, I'm the guinea pig here. You watch me fuck up everything so that when you play... You don't have to. Look at my running backs. What do you see there? You have Josh Jacobs, week six bye. You have Chris Carson, week six bye. You have Sony Michelle, week six bye. Guess who's not going to have a good week six? Me. Me. Because I draft three fucking running backs at week six bye. Damn, Nick. I'm equally the smartest and the dumbest person of all time. You love to see it. So don't do that. So now I have to get some running 
running bikes. Like I can't take James White anymore, which is a great like 10th round pick. I can't take Latavius Murray anymore. You can't have four running backs on a bye. It's just ridiculous. You just can't. It's irresponsible. It's rude. It's disrespectful. Okay. Uh, Julian Edelman. Yeah, I mean, I just think like, why not see 110 targets again this year? Like, no reason not to. He's been such a staple of that offense for so long. Uh, it just makes no no sense for him not to be one of Cam's first targets. They don't have a tight end of consequence. They have no other wide receiver of consequence that's proven anything. Like, I like Nikhil Harry. Mohamed Sanu is fine, but um, Julian Edelman is the only one that's really done anything on a football field. So, Julian Edelman might just back himself into 125 targets again this year. I can't believe Clyde Edwards-Hilaire is about to be the feature back there in KC. What a time. We're going to see a lot of opt-outs, fantasy-relevant opt-outs over the next coming days, man. It's going to be tricky, tricker, tricker, tricker. I am getting an unbelievable amount of tweets sent at me about Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter, by the way. It's at Nick underscore B D G E. I don't know if you, y'all can see that, but it is what it be. Add me. It's probably the single best source of fantasy info. Like it's real breaking news and it's just a beautiful thing. Making uh, Make sure you're following Underdog Fantasy as well. Let me uh, pull up their Twitter account. I started sending them memes to, to shoot out, but I don't know if they've actually done any of them yet. They're open in New Jersey, uh, so it's at Underdog Fantasy, as you can see right here. Make sure you're following them. So, oh, a lot of you guys are probably going to ask, like, am I eligible to play? And here are the states in which you're eligible to play. I realize that my video is still in the middle of the fucking screen. Whatever. Get over it. So this is the list of, of states in which you are not allowed to play in yet. But they are working hard behind the scenes to get... Uh, approval from all these states to open them up. So you have Arizona, you have Delaware, Hawaii, Idaho, Indiana, Iowa, Louisiana, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Nevada, New Hampshire, Pennsylvania, Washington. So there's about, I'm not good at math, but 13 states or so. So we still have about 40 fucking states in which you can play. So the majority of you guys are able to play with me. Go download Underdog Fantasy. It is so damn smooth. It's so addicting. I literally tried to play one draft just to make sure it was up to par with what they used to have on draft and be like, okay, I feel good about telling you guys to join and play with me. Before I know it, I'm in 15 drafts, and it's ridiculous. Ooh, I tell you what, I cannot stop drafting Zach Moss. I just can't. I can't stop doing it. Do I go with a high upside tight end here? I think I need to get Zach Moss because I don't think he's going to fall back to me. It's also, it's very cool that they actually show the positions of all the teams before and after you drafted. So you know, like, okay, so yeah, so he had four running backs, four wide receivers, so you knew he was going to go with the quarterback. My thing was like, okay, he only has two running backs. He has two running backs. Am I going to get Zach Moss going back to me? Because he's probably going to go with the running back here. I didn't think I would. So I had to get my guy there as opposed to going with one of these tight ends, whether it's Hooper, whether it's Kosicki, there you go, Alexander Madison. Well, there's no fan. I, I really like TJ Hawkinson this year. Jonu Smith. So my, my strategy in most drafts are going to be two late round dart tight ends. Not even dart. Like guys who are good. Like even if it's Gronk and Gesicki. If it's Fant and TJ Hawkinson. If it's Goddard and Jonu Smith. Like I like. I'm just pairing both two of those guys. Because one of them is going to hit. Well, hopefully one of them hits. But give yourself double the chance. Love to hear it. Snacks. What are you texting me about? He's going nuts about fucking Darwin Thompson. He's a moron. Um, Woo! Okay. What else do we have to talk about, boys and girls? This has been an exhilarating video for me. I I tend not to... I try to do one video a day because it takes a lot of energy out of me. And the podcast with Matt was literally like fucking four videos in one. It It was legit two and a half hours long. But listen, it's that it's that season. Ah, he took my Kasiki. So I'm gonna go with Hawkinson here. Big fan of Hawkinson. You know what else was on the show sheet that we didn't cover? It was Antonio Brown. And I've actually been finding myself drafting Antonio Brown in like the 17th, 18th round of these best ball drafts. So on the show sheet in which he didn't get to was, is Antonio Brown coming back? I have no fucking idea. But where are the places in which Antonio Brown could land? I'm curious where you guys see the best fit. And the reason that the TJ Hawkinson pick made me think of it 
because I was thinking of realistic landing spots. And I was basically thinking almost any NFC North team makes sense for Antonio Brown. Detroit included. They don't have a receiver like him. They just have big downfield possession, go up and get it guys in Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay. They don't have an Antonio Brown type player on the team. That makes sense. Green Bay. Literally any wide receiver signing makes sense for them because they don't have shit on their roster. You have Minnesota. Minnesota, I think, actually makes the most sense because he literally slides right back into that Stefan Diggs role. They're like the same player. They're 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 both fucking incredible. And he would play that role very, very well. Kirk Cousins is accurate enough, accurate enough to where he won't get angry. So are all three of those quarterbacks. Stafford, Rodgers, Kirk Cousins, Justin Jefferson, already on the COVID IR list. Who knows what happens with him? You don't need to shove him straight into that role if they're playing. 12 personnel, two tight end sets. Antonio Brown's much better separated than Justin Jefferson. That would work flawlessly. So those fit. uh, Bears, you know, that's another story. That's the one team I don't want to see him on. Uh, That would get ugly really quick. Let's let's not get Antonio Brown on the Bears. The Bears, man. Um, Who else? Who else? Who else? So obviously the thing that people are getting most excited about are Seattle, Baltimore, because we see AB working out with them. Uh, I would actually hate both of those landing spots. I would love him to go to the Chiefs, to be honest with you, just to like fuck everybody's whole day up. But I hate the landing spots in Baltimore and Seattle because it makes it so difficult for us as fantasy players to know where we should be going with those wide receiver picks. It fucks up Lockett and Metcalf, adding Antonio Brown to the mix. If he goes to Baltimore, there should be a funnel between Andrews and Hollywood Brown for targets. And that would make things really messy and make you know Hollywood Brown an afterthought in that offense. So I hope he doesn't sign with one of those two teams. I think someone in the NFC North makes a lot of sense. But let me know in the comment section down below, one, if you're enjoying these videos. Two, if, uh, if Antonio Brown does sign with a team, who do you... Oh, you know, here's the one that actually makes the most sense is San Francisco, right? We remember San Fran was in the wide receiver market heavily for both OBJ and Antonio Brown, right? There was they were basically the favorites at one point I think for both of those guys. Neither came to fruition. Neither came to fruition. But both of them wanted a wide receiver bad. And now with Debo going down, it only makes sense that Antonio Brown should be on their fucking hit list. Doesn't make sense, man. So I think that that position makes a lot of sense. Okay, okay, okay. 16 seconds. We got our quarterback. See, this is where I would take Cam Newton in like the 11th round to pair up with Kyler Murray. I mean, you're getting 25-point performance week over week from one of them suckers. Though I should probably get another tight end. I can get him on the way back. We're going to grab Cam here. Skirt. Cam and Kyler. Love that. A little stack action between Julian Edelman and Cam Newton. Definitely in favor of stacking in best ball. It gives you that ceiling. Listen, you got it. You got a place in the top three in order to get any money from this. You're not shooting for floor. You're not shooting for safety. You're shooting for upside. Cam Newton is the upside panty dropper. Noah Fant. Yep, this is where I probably should have went with another tight end. I need to diversify on Noah Fant. Uh, another feature I believe they are adding soon to Underdog is your actual ownership percentage, which would be fucking incredibly fantastic. Because I just I just make shit up on my owner ownership percentage. I just like I'm like oh you know I've drafted T.J. Hawkinson 58 percent of the time. It's time to diversify and go Noah Fant this time, right? And I just make those numbers up in my head. I have no idea what the actual percentages are, but I like to diversify. If I don't have enough Noah Fant here, I will take him in another draft, you know, et cetera, et cetera, shit like that. So, um, yes. Yeah, so I believe they're adding ownership percentage very soon. They are working on it. I mean, Tariq Cohen is a guy that I kind of fucking hate, but I'd never see him fall all the way to the 12th round for a guy who's probably going to catch 60 to 70 passes. And I need a running back. So, Dob, don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm shutting down my YouTube channel if he takes Tariq Cohen. Don't do it. Don't fucking do it. Don't fucking, don't, you fucking two-bit, dirty, pig-stealing mother. This is going to time out. It's going to take Tariq Cohen, isn't it? Hey, you took no elbow, Ben. I love that. Give me Tariq. Give me Tyreek. Coming off of 79 receptions. I actually tweeted out a stat yesterday. So, got a lot of engagement. 
for whatever reason. It was like, I fucking hated this tweet. I was pissed that I even sent it out afterwards. I'm so extra. I'm sorry. I'm like so aggressive all the time. This tweet right here that you could see right below my video. Last year, I had more targets than DK Metcalf, Stefan Diggs, Terry McLaurin, and Calvin Ridley. But I had fewer receiving yards than Alex Erickson, Zach Pascal, and Mohamed Sanu. Who am I? I already fucking ruined it for you guys. You know who it is. But here are some of the most frequent responses. We had a ton of Jameson Crowder. We had an archery store. That's a pretty good one. Fournette. Curtis, we got a ton of Curtis Samuels as well. Those were the leaders. It was Curtis Samuel, Jamison Crowder, and Leonard Fournette. But the answer was Terry Cohen. Terry Cohen had more targets than Metcalf, Stephon Diggs, Terry McLaurin, Calvin Ridley. Did I miss my pick? No, I did not. And uh, he had fewer receiving yards than Erickson, Pascal, Muhammad Sanu. So case in point, he was fucking wildly inefficient last year and really, really, really bad. But numbers don't lie, and I cannot lie about 80 receptions out of the backfield. They added no running back depth to the backfield, which tells you, again, it is the Cohen and Montgomery show. And they are going to be lining up Terry Cohen out wide in the slot on 35 to 40% of his snaps like he has done year in and year out. So I expect another receiving yardage mark like we got from Cohen last year. So I don't I don't hate this. You know, if he breaks off a big run, scores a fucking 30 yard touchdown or something, then he gets into your best ball lineup. I tell you what, I can't wait to edit this and upload it and order a big fat fucking pizza and not do anything for the rest of the day. I am tired. It's only five o'clock on a Wednesday. Oh, the summer really fucking kills me, man. It really does. It does a number on my body. I feel like I aged 22 years in the summer. I love it, though. I love it. And I love it. Dallas gutter. Did I pick a second tight end? I don't remember. No, I didn't. What a terrible move by me. I should have picked the tight end instead of uh, instead of Tariq Fraud Farce Cohen. All right, what else we got going on here? What can I fucking blabber about? Oh, my back is sweaty. How are you going to pick Justin Jefferson? He's on the fucking COVID list, animal. One of the questions uh, Matt Kelly asked me today was, you know, do you want your players to get COVID right now to get it out of the way? I said, I can't believe it's fucking become a hot take that, no, I don't want my fantasy players to get COVID. We don't know what's going to happen down the line. We don't know. What's going to happen in three months, in six months, in a year with the players' bodies who have COVID? What if it starts to affect, like, just because you test negatively for COVID in two weeks after getting the virus doesn't mean it's not impacting your body anymore. What if it brings your stamina down for the next six months to 75 or 80% of what you are? Huge hit. We don't know that. None of us are fucking doctors. Anyone who's talking about on Twitter or fantasy analysts talking about they know this, they know that, they don't know shit. I don't know shit either. But that's the point. None of us know shit. And no, I don't want my guy getting COVID. If he gets it during the season, then I have something to worry about. But until then, nope, I don't want my guy getting COVID. So no, it's not a positive for me that Justin Jefferson has COVID already. Get him the fuck out of here. All right. Okay, so this is a perfect example. Like, I don't like Blake Jarwin this year. Like, I really don't like him at all. But I have almost no shares of him in best ball. I need a second tight end. And, uh, and I still fucking hate him and I'm pretty pissed that I just took him there. But listen, Blake Jarwin's a guy that a lot of people like he's in an offense where Kellen Moore had the third fastest pace in the NFL. Dak almost threw for 5,000 passing yards. They're going to be successful. And Mike McCarthy's coming in, which means they're going to continue to pass the ball and probably pass it at a higher rate than they have been over the last X number of years. Um, so I don't like, I, again, I don't really like Blake Jarwin. He's not someone I'm targeting in season long, but Again, I like to diversify the rev. And I might grab a third tight end here just to shore up because these guys are not necessarily encouraging. But otherwise, we're feeling pretty uh, pretty fucking shitty about our team, to be honest. Nah, I actually, I, I like the skill players that we have. The quarterbacks make me feel nice and warm and fuzzy inside. Josh Jacobs, Chris Carson, Sony, Zach Moss, Tariq Cohen, and then Tyreek Hill, Adam Thielen, Devontae Parker, Julian Edel. I really like that wide receiver group there. Hawkinson, Blake. Not not too shabby. What do you guys think about my team? How fucking bad is it on a scale of 0 to 42? Let's look at Animal's team again. Still rolling with one quarterback. Why are you switching back on me? One quarterback. Uh, I guess. I, oh, it's my pick. That's why. Oh, Hunter Renfro. Good get there. Good get, sir. I might take Ian Thomas, too. I think he's got. Oh, I, I also like Chris Herndon, man. Very forgotten about guy. Very forgotten about. Is there anyone that I actually like still on the board? 
John Ross, I don't hate with Joe Burrow coming in. I feel like he's a forgotten man. There's my boy, Antonio Brissown. I really don't think he's going to fucking sign anywhere. No one that I like running back wise. Actually, I don't hate Naeem Hines. I'm going to take Naeem Hines if I can get it. Don't auto pick. Hey, we got it. I need another running back, man. And just like Tariq Cohen, Naeem Hines, I, I, I actually hate Naeem Hines. He's probably like one, of, one of my least favorite prospects coming in. And uh, I think Jonathan Taylor coming in there only hurts his chances of staying on the field. But if he sees another 60 or 70 targets, there are weeks where he will be a starting running back for my lineup here. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for these fucking high upside guys like Actually, eh, I probably should have went with Jarek McKinnon there. But, like, Raquel Armstead is just as good of a bet to overtake Leonard Fournette as he is to put up a zero in your lineup for 16 straight weeks. Same thing with all the other guys on this list. So, I'd rather have a guy like Naeem Hines, who I know is probably going to have a floor of, like, five to six fantasy points and then break out for 12 to 13 every three or four weeks. So, I'd rather have a guy like Hines in best ball than one of these guys who are just, like, shooting for upside. Because in season long, they're a better pick. Because if they don't do shit, you could always drop them. Here, you have no waiver wire access. Again, guys, you have no... This is the funnest part about best ball. Like, the best part about fantasy football in general is drafting, right? It's the funnest part of any fantasy football season. It's just doing the draft. This is all you do for that. You draft. You draft a good team. If your name's not Animal, you draft a really good team. Draft Drew Lock. Of course, you draft fucking Drew Lock. Draft a really good team, and then you come back, collect your money at the end of the year. You don't do anything in season. So you literally can get like 10 slow drafts. They have fast drafts and they have slow drafts available on the site. A lot of you guys probably haven't played in slow drafts, but they give you eight hours in between picks. And that's fun because you don't actually have to be at your computer. You don't have to be on your phone and ready to do the draft itself. Like you don't have to be paying attention for 45 straight minutes. Slow drafts are fun because you could start up a bunch of them, right? If you deposit $10 on your underdog account, you could rip off three slow drafts right away. And there you go, like every hour or so, you'll be on the clock. And you could sit on the clock and think about what pick you want to make, right? It becomes more enjoyable. That's why I have like 15 drafts open. Those are not all fast drafts. I would say 95. This is the only fast draft I have. Uh, this, well, these drafts that I do, these videos that I do with you guys on Thursdays each week going forward until the season starts will probably be the only fast drafts I actually do on here. But they're really fun if you do decide to do them outside of me doing them on YouTube. So you have fast drafts, you have slow drafts, and you could do either one of them. What else have we got here? So we got six. I have six running backs already, four wide receivers. I need to start probably pounding wide receiver because, again, you start three wide receivers as opposed to two, which is what you're doing for the running back position. So we talk about floor. There's not a lot of guys I have confident in having a good floor. So I like John Ross. I don't hate James Washington in best ball. I don't hate Denzel Mims. We'll throw Antonio Brown. I think Fitz, I mean, Fitz is going to stay on the field. That's the thing. Fitz is, Fitz is probably old enough age to be scared to get COVID. But you could see his numbers are, are dwindling pretty heavily. But, I mean, listen, still 110 targets in back-to-back -back years here. If you're going to give me 110 targets in the 15th, 16th round, which probably won't happen now that they have DeAndre Hopkins, but he's still going to be. They play four wide receiver sets all day. He's going to be on the field as a slot for 95% of the snaps. So I like Larry Fitzgerald as a floor play uh, later on in these best ball drafts, man. No Cobb, no Davis, no Stills, no Tyrell, no Steven Sims. Mohamed Sanu, Matt Kelly actually kind of convinced me that he might be an okay best ball pick, but I already have Julian Edelman and Cam Newton. Maybe that's not a bad stack, actually. Maybe that's, maybe that's, oh, Devonta Freeman, I'm going to throw up. Maybe, maybe that's actually the worst stack of all time, and I'm not about to take Mohamed Sanu before these guys. But maybe it's a sneaky, underrated stack. I don't hate Russell Gage either. I think he's being slept on a tad bit. Jaws might start as the opening outside wide receiver if Ash Alshon Jeffrey starts on the pup list. So we're going to go with John Ross here, man. We can go with John Ross here. He is the the play. I, I don't think T.A. Higgins is going to make a big impact this rookie year. I have very little faith that A.J. Green is going to regain his form from years ago. Everybody's just yelling at me about how I'm an A.J. Green hater. I was an A.J. Green hater last year, and I was fucking right. I said in March, he's not going to play in 2019. And what happens? He didn't play a fucking snap. So I was right. So stop giving me shit for hating on A.J. Green. I was right. I'm going to say it six more times. I was right. I was right. I wasn't left because I was fucking right. Okay? I like A.J. Green a lot more this year than I did last year. Now he's finally healthy, I think. But he's also a year older. And now he's really fucking old. And it's been a while since we've seen him do it for a 16-game Span. So I don't have a lot of faith in AJ Green. I don't have a lot of faith in T. Higgins for 2020, only speaking. 
Tyler Boyd, I think, is going to eat. But I think John Ross could develop into the deep threat in 2020 for the Cincinnati Bengals. And Joe Burrow is very accurate down the field, man. Ross has that killer speed. So I actually like Ross a little bit uh, later on in these best ball drafts. Denzel Mims, Antonio Brown. I might just say fuck it and take Antonio Brown here. I, I can't believe we're not hearing rumors about Antonio Brown to the 49ers, man. It makes no damn sense. It makes no sense. They were like the only team in the rumor mill when he originally was circulating around the place. And now Debo Samuels is hurt. Just fucking sign Antonio Brown, man. Just do it. Just do it. Who are we going to take here? Should we take another tight end? What are, what are the tight ends we got on the bed? Eh? Yeah. Oh, this is ugly. Jace Dawson. So this is another example of diversifying. I've been going, if I'm going with third tight end or a very late second tight end, Dawson Knox has been the guy. I've taken almost no Jace. But since I am doing fake calculations in my head and I know that, uh, Jace would be the pick here. But I'm not going to take a tight end because I need wide receiver help. And I will probably go with Fitz here because I have a stack now of Kyler and Fitz. I try to, I always try to stack, man. I always try to, whatever quarterbacks I get, I try to get at least a secondary piece of the passing offense when it comes to the weapons for them. So Kyler and Larry Fitz, and we have Cam Newton and Julian Edelman. So we've also diverted. I'm such a dumb. F- Actually, it's not that bad that we have two week 11 buys. It's fine. It's not fine, but I'll just pretend it's fine. So this draft is going to be 18 rounds, guys. How long is this taking so far? 40. Wow. These are going to be long drafts, even though they're 30 seconds. I can't believe I just my throat hurts like a motherfucker. We're going to call these the COVID best ball drafts because they hurt my throat a lot from talking so much. And I'm pretty sure the first symptom of COVID is like your sore throat. Well, actually, it's probably a fever, which I fucking have right now because it's hot in here. And uh, and uh, yeah, so I basically have all. So these best ball drafts literally give me all the symptoms of COVID. But we're going to fight through. I'm the only fantasy analyst. You want to talk about fantasy football players getting COVID? Nah. But it's good if I get COVID because this is, I rattle off shit like this. This is like my Michael Jordan flu game. This is my COVID flu draft. This is what we're going to name this. If it was SEO friendly, that's what I would name the title of this YouTube video. But it ain't. So <clears throat> y'all will just have to trust. Put some trust on it. Skirt. Yeah, yeah. Oh. My back is so sweaty. This is a great fucking shirt, by the way. Barney Cools. BarneyCools.com, Australian website, makes the absolute most electric button-down t-shirts. They're expensive. Very high quality, but very pricey. Totally fucking worth it, though. Especially if you're just sitting inside your fucking apartment in the dark recording YouTube videos. It's very worth it for that attire. I'm about to need to get a second burr. Man, I can't imagine there are still a lot of people still with me right now. If you are, if you're listening via podcast, man, I need some more reviews on the podcast. If you've been listening to me for like, even if it's a couple weeks, a couple months, a couple years, like we have like 400 reviews on there and we've gotten over like 300,000 downloads on podcasts, which tells me that's like 0.1% of people actually give me a review. Now it hurts my fucking feelings. Listen, I know I don't show emotion a lot, which is a lie. I show a lot of emotions on my videos, but I don't show emotion when it comes to the reviews and I'm sad. I'm somber. I'm melancholy about it. I need more reviews on the podcast, y'all. Please, please. If you've enjoyed any of my work, just, just scroll down on the podcast and just like, even if you don't listen to the podcast, even if you're here for YouTube, like it takes two seconds to go to the podcast app, find my podcast, literally just type in BDGE. Leave a five-star review and just, like, write something. Write something. Write. Just be like Nick. Nick be looking sexy, man. Nick be lo- Nick, Nick be that motherfucker. Don't really write. Yeah, you could write that. I don't give a shit what you write. But it'd be cool. I also, like, really appreciate the thumbs-ups on the videos and the comments and stuff. If you're still hanging around right now on YouTube, that's fucking incredible, and I love you, and I would love for you to drop a comment letting me know that you're still here. All right, so we got 2662. Two quarterbacks, two tight ends, two running, six running backs, six wide receivers. So typically I'd look at like my strengths and weaknesses. I don't like to go with three quarterbacks and three tight ends. I'd rather have the skill position players locked up uh, unless I go with two guys on the same bye week, which would be dumb. But I could see that my – I'll go crazy here and go O.J. Howard for no fucking reason. But 
I see that obviously my tight ends are much weaker than my quarterbacks. So they are the position that I'm going to go with three over two, right? Like I don't need a third quarterback when I have Kyler and Cam, but I probably need a third tight end when I have TJ, Blake, and OJ Howard. And the cool part about best ball, not the cool part, probably the dumb part, is that it's so new. It's such a new like form of fantasy gaming that we don't really have many, many statistics and actually like game theory strategies to back up the picks behind it. So pretty much everything I'm saying to you is fucking nonsense, except for like the season long, the player analysis, I feel like makes sense a little bit sometimes. What else we got? Why do I like Russell Gage? I don't know. Muhammad Sanu's gone. Austin Hooper's gone. Russell Gage is like actually semi-athletic. Uh, let's talk about, let's, let's find it. This is what I like to do sometimes when I start my research on a player too. Type in the player's name. And then I'll go people you follow because those are the only smart people talking about fantasy. And you could see some good stats from this, man. It's it's that quick. Russell Gage averaged 7.3 targets per game after Mohamed Sanu was traded to New England last year. That's a full season pace of 117 targets. Disclaimer, Austin Hooper missed three of those games. Calvin Ridley, three, and Julio Jones, one. But still, the fucking infamous but still. Russell Gage led Falcons wide receivers in red zone targets. What the... That H stands for heck. I know it does, Otis. What the heck? All right, so Russell Gage. Not the worst pick. Based off those two tweets, you just fucking sucked me in. Just when I thought they pulled me out, they sucked me back in. All right, that's going to conclude the draft. There's more picks left, but my picks are done. That is 18 rounds. That is 50 unadulterated, unfiltered, raw minutes straight out of my fucking face hole. And I'm, I'm exhausted. My throat hurts. I have a fever. But it was worth it because I really, truly do love you guys. And I appreciate all of the fucking support. Please, if you want to come draft with me on Underdog, the app is absolutely flawless. It's the most fucking addicting app since fucking Bumble or Tinder. For all you hoes out there, I know what y'all up to. Underdog, greater sign, hinge, Bumble, Tinder. Go download it in the referral slot. after You're going to see it after you deposit. So you're going to put down $10. You're going to put your credit card in, hit deposit. They're going to be like, successful. Has anyone referred you here? That's when you throw in BDGE. That's when you throw our name in. That's when they let me know, like, Nick, we see you out here working. We see you out here worth the investment. We love you. And that means I love you. And that means I will continue to make these videos. So let me know in the comment section what you thought about the first draft on Underdog. What kind of content you want to see going forward for the remainder of the summer. Make sure you slap the shit out of that thumbs up button. Make sure you slap the shit out of that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Because we're doing fantasy stuff like this day in, day out. Maybe even more than day in, than day out. Maybe nine videos a week. Just, just maybe. All right. Leave that podcast rating and review. I love you. I'm out. Until tomorrow, fade the public. Peace.